here it was good everyone i am finally back in here somewhat um i've been dealing with just weird sicknesses for some reason and i'm still a little congested but finally not congested enough to do a video and i'm finally coming back in here with a um i haven't done this in a while the uh and what we're doing is how to deal with aggressive players featuring Victor and Jin. So, like I said, I haven't done this in a while and I'm happy to bring it back to Tekken 8. And again, I apologize for my absence of um, from Tekken 8. So I've been, don't, don't get me wrong, I've been cooking, you know, behind the scenes. But we're not here for that today. We're here how to deal with aggressive players featuring Victor and Jin. And uh, basically, we're going to be focusing on how you can read your opponent and how you can get out of really tough situations. So starting off with an easy one, uh, this Victor player was uh, pretty simple to read. So for some players, this may be new knowledge. For more advanced players, this may be like, oh yeah, I could have done this in the first round. So don't worry about that. We're gonna go into a, a little bit more of a harder one featuring Jin. So this Jin player was, was very aggressive and it was calculated too. Very, very tough. Um, but I believe we we made it through anyway. Actually, I don't think it was that one. It was this one <laughs> the 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 Kishin um, Jin player this this gym player was very very tough, but we, we made it through so um, Let's go ahead and start with Victor first and again with these uh, With this series if you haven't seen my other videos before basically, we're just gonna go through step by step live review we're not using advanced knowledge or frame data as far as applying it in a science we are basically focusing on just applying basic fundamentals to get you out of tough situations so and these are fundamentals that you could apply to any um character no matter what you play to the point where if you pick up a brand new character you can still come out winning without any knowledge of how Get to play your character so battle. but let's go ahead and we're gonna start with uh, of course king because sadly my armor king is not in Tekken 8 don't know why oh well all right Round before one. we start here fight. let's go ahead and turn on all the necessary information which we're gonna do attack info for both frame info let's actually go ahead and turn this off hit properties display because we want to know what's a high mid low um we'll turn these off okay So starting off here, you can see this is a very, um, this is the first start of the round, so, right? So we're not really gonna get, like, crazy read or anything like that. But as we can see, I do get hit with a counter hit launcher. So uh, basically when you get hit with counter hit launchers, right? You, you kind of want to go ahead and take those moments to be like, oh, why did I get hit with that, right? Like you have to really critically analyze yourself in these moments so you don't get hit with this again. So let's go ahead and rewind here at the start of the match. Let's see what happens. Why did I get counter hit it? And this is why it's good to go back to your previous games and analyze yourself, you know? It's kind of hard to kind of really look into yourself to be like, hmm, wow, I, I, I really just lost the match because I messed up. It's really hard to do that, right? I, it's hard for me too, but you learn so much from this. So immediately I'm gonna be wondering why did I get hit with that counter hit low, right? It seems, and I'm kind of saying this with a little bit of um, prior knowledge already. It seems he doesn't like pressure already, right? But we don't know that yet. It was the first time we applied something like that, right? So let's keep it going again. And we have to remember too with Victor. Victor, there's a reason why Victor teleports. There's a reason why Victor has low evading moves. There's a reason why Victor has high crushing moves and he can teleport back, forth, up, down. And there's a reason why he has a ranged weapon and he has a sword. There is a reason for that, right? And the reason for that being is to make new players, you know, more successful in their um, ranked gameplay. Right? Even that move alone can reach from what feels like half of the screen or a full screen size from the board, right? Immediately goes for, um, looks like his heat dash, but I blocked him in. And it 
happens again. I get hit with a counter hit low again, like on sequence. And of course, the round is his. But at that moment, I realized something, right? And this is at a moment where this is where second round, you can really start applying some fundamentals. So my prediction, my theory is, my theory is he doesn't like pressure. And that sweeping low is a very evasive low. And it's meant to do exactly that get out of pressure right and turn the momentum into his favor so starting from the beginning of the round i do a uh, two one which is a safe move it leaves him plus three and that's why i back away to i'm a little bit unsafe i'm minus three so when you're minus it's probably preferably best not to attack unless you know you have a hard read on your opponent so i'm just gonna do my two one i'm gonna back away immediately goes for the low sweep again immediately right so then i bait that out and then with king i have ranged moves so if you are a Jin player if you are um who else do i have in mind the only other person that's coming to mind right now is uh, yoshimitsu um you have to look for ranged moves so some people or some characters may not have such a lunging forward move like king does that starts with a mid so you do have to keep that in mind. For me, it works in my favor because of that range. It's perfect range for me to get into the offensive and start building my momentum, right? Goes for the low sweep. 4-2-1. Pete engager. I can throw a mid on purpose because for my mid, right? And this is uh, King's forward four, I believe. Um, my mid is safe and I, I don't really lose anything if they block it, right? So the fact that he's minus, right? He's under pressure and me as a king player, I can go in for a grapple if he stays blocking. That can be a really bad time for him. So what does he do? You know, some, a lot of players tend to duck king because they don't want to deal with the grapple pressure. But I want to say as a king player, please don't do that. Do not duck king. You have to be confident in your grapples. Um, only if you have a hard read then duck and do the launch right but once king players realize that you don't like breaking his throws and you like to duck his throws instead that's when dangerous dangerous mids come out right so for an example here's the test right let's see if i like let's see if you like ducking and again we're gonna see these plays over and over because of a lot to say immediately goes for the duck and i get catch him with the forward four immediately goes in for a standing three and then this is in the emphasis where if you um know the other streamer uh, avoiding the puddle he uh actually makes a, t a great video i highly recommend that you go ahead and look that up he makes a great video about letting players essentially quote, kill themselves and what he means by that is if you notice Let's see the frame advances on that. Immediately goes for the standing three, the wake up three. He's plus seven. I go ahead and I realize I know my frames, right? And I know that, okay, I need to kind of go ahead and back away. I actually didn't realize we can launch that move. That's minus 16. So hop kick it. Please hop kick, launch, whatever you have to do. Whatever you have that's minus 50 or 15 or um, whatever it is that you have, right? That's launch punishable move use that move so in this case he immediately goes for that move um leaves it minus 16 and he's throwing that move out there so carelessly that tells me that he doesn't have a good basic knowledge of even his own characters and that's a that means a lot to me as his opponent so again we put pressure and at this point here we're applying pressure and we're taking our frames on purpose and not doing anything with them sometimes you don't always have to attack when you are plus it is sometimes it's better off that way and we're gonna see why i'm plus eight jab pressure plus eight i throw out my down three because with me being plus i kind of have a free range to do what i want with you as the opponent right so i don't mind my i throw down my down three and then that this is when he starts throwing his pressure and this is good so i looks like i can duck this high maybe we'll have to try that out sometime but it does look like i'm plus eight so maybe this is not duckable but it's you basically he gives up his turn 
immediately goes ahead and actually throws out another move with punish so king has a great with punisher which is back one two reaches from practically what feels like half the screen um beefy damage too great great damage what and look what happens he's under pressure let's check my frames on that he's minus five low sweep and here's the reason why we don't take our frames sometimes is because sometimes moves like that that victor has a huge high crush even sometimes mid crushing evasive counter hit launching lows they're gonna throw that out there so in this case we throw out our plus frame move and then we just sidestep we just sidestep we're gonna see what he de he decides to do while he's minus he goes for that move so i'm like okay okay that says a lot now we start throwing out lows because now i want to see what he does under grapple pressure if you realize i did not throw a throw once in the first round because we're just getting reads we don't want to reveal our our ace of spades per se or whatever our big blackjack hand or whatever metaphor you want to use we don't want to reveal that so so soon because if we do our opponent's going to know all of our tricks and they're not going to be tricks anymore so we got to be wary of that so then i throw out a shining wizard because i want to see how his reaction is doesn't break it so again we're knowledge checking and we're requiring more data before the download he throws out that move in the first uh first round two seconds he throws out that move and he uses his heat engager and that's okay doesn't do that much damage we're chilling right he does the same sequence again and i've made a video on this before like please we, we have to use our heat engagers and our heat meters wisely because if we just use a really powerful tool you know like i'm not gonna use a torque hammer drill to use a screw like to screw in something into wood i'm not gonna use that i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna use a screwdriver um and if that metaphor doesn't make sense he's using a really powerful tool to and he wastes it completely just for plus five that's just plus five frames that's that's not a lot i could still throw something out on purpose if i have a really hard read on it which i kind of did but i didn't want to throw anything crazy now we're getting his sense of where his panic starts to set in if you realized we're just throwing jab pressure i delay my one two one on purpose i'm plus 10 what is he gonna do throws out the low now we have a hard read and now we're just applying the timing right right so i didn't launch punish it immediately but we're getting the timing down i'm giving him more tests because in this case sometimes I'm not saying it's a strategy to let your opponent have a life lead on purpose or anything like that um but in general you can acquire more data data like that you know so sometimes if you go ahead and eliminate an opponent which is good because that means you don't have less time to worry about what tricks they have up on their sleeve but if, if you kind of let your opponent stay alive a little bit longer you can acquire more data and you can apply it even apply that pressure and that knowledge check even further to the point where you shut them down completely and you're gonna see how this is gonna develop now because we we acquired more data now with this dude goes for a really uh that's minus 19 i wonder if what can i do with that but the range was pretty far so we're just gonna back away you can see what he does low high jab pressure he does it again immediately on pressure goes for the low sweep so again we got the hard read now you see we're just trying to bait it out we're tired to bait it out we're gonna go ahead we're gonna go ahead and use our we got plus eight and we're not gonna do anything we're just gonna duck low plus eight watch again This is a pretty easy read for, for most advanced players, so bear with bear with me. I'll have to go ahead and probably do another video sometime. Um, this is important to know your strings. Understand that when Victor does this string, the, the gun is actually duckable, and you could launch punish him in the middle of his teleport. It's weird. I don't know. Like, I mean, look at him right now. He's literally not in the screen. He's gone. He's non-existent right now for this frame. But launch punishable so just make sure that you duck you have to block all the other strings first all the other hits in the string first then duck the gun 
to mess up the combo, but I know for the fact that he's going to try to get up for a wake up three. And of course, forward four neutral two is going to come out of King. Ouch. He gets up immediately and starts doing something, but you, you the King's Oki in this game, just like in Tekken 7, is, is something else. Something else. So we go for a capital punishment. Wall combo. We could have launched that. So that's immediately knowledge check. That's a knowledge check, right? And now we're going to go ahead and punish that. GG. And then what's crazy is I didn't record the other set, but basically, I mean, set number two, it basically went the same way. It went the same way. So, and it was a lot quicker. So we basically won six rounds straight after this set and all because we kind of let our opponent quote kill themselves and uh, we got the read so now i am at 16 minutes so we're gonna go ahead and actually end this video here and then i'm gonna go ahead and do a separate video for how to read a little bit more of an aggressive player um and a more calculated player and this is going to be this gin player so stay tuned for that but i'm gonna go ahead and end this here i appreciate y'all coming by Glad to be back on YouTube here, and I'll see y'all in the next video.